We're on. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. And I'm going to say good evening since it's later in the day. Can people hear me okay? Um, we have six attending. Okay, let's see. Um, Yoshua, yeah. do we have questions? So, do we have questions? I'm going to start with a prayer while we're looking for questions, okay? Amen. So, are there any questions out there, or does Yehoshua have the questions? Can people speak to me on this yet, or no? Um, we, we can collect questions, then. You can also add questions. You can type in their questions. By typing your on, question in. We'll go on Facebook. Okay. So here's a question. So first question. Yeah. This is something I struggle with and have for some time now. My question is, I find myself having to self-censor my view of the world, which is in line with what you talk of especially in the workplace through fear of losing my job and feel this may have happened in the past due to me speaking the truth. How do I address this situation? It's a, a most relevant question. The question is, I find myself having to self-center because I may be censored or I may lose my job. I think that's a fair statement. And what I talked about is that's actually the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is people not feeling free to give any answer that's outside the box and outside the social pressure uh, that is put on people. Why is that a big question? Because we are in what I would call, I mean, use the word post truth reality, subjective reality, uh, uh, rather than God as truth. So in post-truth subjective reality versus objective reality, we have a situation where people can make up whatever rules they want. And I believe in this, and if you don't like it, I'm going to attack you, which is what we're talking about. This is exactly what the question's saying. Um, so what to do? Well, there's multiple, several levels to look at that. When you're in a situation where people want to live in what we call fascist, because it is fascist, post-truth reality where people can't have a discussion because there's only one view. If you don't like my view, I'm going to censor you on Facebook or I'm going to censor you on whatever. You know, uh, and, and that is a very uh, real threat at one level. So what to do? Well, first, you could just take the mark of the beast. A lot of people are going to choose to do that. Uh, the second solution, particularly in a work situation or wherever, uh, is just to be very tactful because and note who the people are around you who are asking the question. If you think they're not going to want to hear what you have to say, it doesn't make sense to express your opinion when one, they're not interested, and two, you're going to get penalized. Third option, and it, it has both to do with work as well as social setting is associate with people who are open to discussion. They don't have to agree with you. They just have to be open to discussion. In other words, there's not just uh, when we say truth, deeper truth, truth of God, there's more than one way to express it or to understand it. In post-truth, uh, pseudo moral reality, there's only one truth, which isn't a truth, but there's only one position. 
That's what people are facing today in a very big way, particularly on things like the social media where you can be attacked in multiple ways because you didn't phrase it right, didn't say it right. Now, what's the problem with that is that is actually overt fascism and where you truly aren't uh, free to express your opinion and unless you want to get heavily penalized. So the solution <clears throat> at one level is not hanging out with people who, who aren't insisting you take the mark of the beast as a, a proof of being okay. Now, that's probably the best solution. The next solution level is when you believe enough in yourself and you know the inner truth, you're not too affected by people's, I'm gonna use the word subjective realities because that's changing from minute to minute. So if you're speaking from the inner truth, that's good. But in general, as Jesus said, you don't put uh, throw pearls before swine. So you have to be very thoughtful about to whom and how you're speaking. Uh, and it's, it's kind of, that's the level of message. In today's world, as we can see with the different things happening in the United States, but really around the world, um, there's tremendous pressure to stay within the matrix, which again is the mark of the beast. So uh, in terms of thought and also in terms of action. So that's it. You know, we, we have the riots here or whatever. I don't know if that, I would call them riots, but yes, there was something like a riot. Uh, and if you didn't participate in those demonstrations or, you know, the riots, then somehow there was something wrong with you. And so it, that's why I use the word action, not just words. So if you weren't out demonstrating and so forth. Uh, and so, the, again, the most important thing is surround yourself with good company. Basic tenet for spiritual life. And that's why we have created the Tree of Life community, which is an international community where you can express your opinion. But more important, more important than expressing your opinion is you can remain in integrity and you can also get feedback. So you can begin to refine your opinion because you may be three quarters right. Uh, and when I say right, but you know, so the, the need for discussion is good. Need for community is good. So I'm gonna just mention again that, you know, just treealife.mn.co boom, or drcousins.com, and you can really get that kind of, uh, you know, support and feel part of the community. That's why we did it. Uh, honestly, number one thing, people are feeling isolated, not free to talk, and, and, and people, we're, we're all born originals. This kind of social pressure tries to make us all become copies. Next step from copies is called slaves. And so when we're really talking about seeing the bigger picture, not just your personal thing, but they're definitely connected, is that um, if we uh, just repeat back to the story of the matrix, we essentially become slaves in the matrix and in a sense fall into, I'm gonna say mental or mind control. That's where it goes. And if we are able to say, no, I'm original, I need to be around situations where my original soul source understandings can be heard, you're going to be supported and be more open to it. So it's an extremely important question. Uh, it's probably a question a lot of people probably have. Um, so there we are. Really good question. Um, next question. Can autoimmune disease be reversed naturally? For example, rheumatoid arthritis. Can autoimmune disease be reversed naturally? The answer is yes. I've treated a variety of, you know, not, not, a, not guaranteeing 100%, okay? 
But osteoarthritis is 95% healed in a few weeks with fasting and so on. But rheumatoid, we have to rebalance and build the immune system and the rest of the system. And we can get maybe close to at least 50% uh, freedom as we heal the immune system out of autoimmune and, and get rid of the rheumatoid. It doesn't show it there. Yeah. No, no, because that, that's in Zoom on Facebook. Okay, good. So we're looking for more questions. Uh, and how do they put the question in? Is it true that everyone has a spiritual guide or angel? In my belief system, in my observation, yes. Ooh, up that one. Yeah. That's my belief. Uh, and then you kind of check out. But what is the spiritual guide? Many people feel it's your own higher soul. And the more we're connected to the higher soul, the more we're connected to the spiritual guide. So there's a little overlap. Is that really just your higher self? Well, not just. Is that your higher self? Fantastic. That's good. Um, but whatever, by going inward, we can connect to the higher self, your soul, or your spiritual guide. They may be all the same, or they may be slightly different. Good question, Michael. Okay, next question. So we're checking for more questions. These are both been excellent questions. Okay, on Facebook or nothing on, okay. So there's a lot of chaos in the world, obviously a little bit more in the US at this moment than other places. Uh, and you may see that as a bad thing. Uh, what are we gonna do here? You may see that as a bad thing but it actually is prophecy. Uh, this is a time of chaos. And the question that comes up for people is, okay, chaos, don't think is good or bad. Think of it as chaos is chaos and understand that God reigns over the chaos. Darkness reigns over the chaos, but uh, God reigns over the darkness. So knowing that, um, then we're open to receive the energy of chaos. And our job is to bring it into form. That's the whole process of creation. That's really a beautiful thing to have happen is we're, we're, we're creating form out of chaos. How do we do that? We don't have to be a social planner to do it, okay? Form from chaos comes from the inner truth of who we are. The more that we're connected to the inner truth of who we are, the, which as I, I will describe it as in essence, we have the light of God within us. We also know it as the will of God. When our mind is through, like the best is through meditation. When our mind is quiet, we're able to access the will of God. And that guides us to a way of uh, acting that brings harmony to society and brings form to chaos. Now, since God is running through everyone and everybody in, the more people tune into the will of God through really the six foundations, sevenfold peace, which helps you create a quiet mind, a clear mind, and be in relationship to all levels, seven levels of who we are, what happens then is that uh, more and more people begin to tune in to the inner form, God's will, that then begins to create form 
to the chaos. Now we're in what we call the fourth turning, which I, I have to be honest, I don't totally get, except it has to do with chaos and poverty and, and, and things we're actually experiencing now, all these things. And, but from that becomes a greater awakening. And that's kind of the key. So our job is to stay centered within this, uh, develop our own inner strength, and then uh, see how we're being guided in the midst of the chaos, rather than going outside trying to do something with the chaos. So the chaos is an energetic field that's got many levels, many people taking care uh, uh, advantage of it this way or that, as we see looting and things like that. Uh, you know, but that's the lowest form of taking you know, the chaos. Um, the highest form is to say it's chaos allows us the time to step back and examine who we are, how we're living our lives, and then bringing it into some form or some order. So it's an empowerment. It's a reset chaos button, but then it opens us up into, I'm going to say, the, in this world, the messianic times. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, we want to take advantage of the chaos. I'm not saying go out in the street and be, be part of the chaos, because the whole, in the US, but really the whole world is being affected by the chaos. I'm saying that's just part of the bigger picture of world chaos. And the whole idea is to go within, so we're not as affected by the chaos, and we're not upset mentally, physically, and emotionally by the chaos, which a lot of people are. A lot of people are kind of like losing their minds over the whole thing because we're going from the old order into a new order beauty of chaos. Disorder becomes order. So our work is find the inner order that then brings us to ultimate and outer order. It may take a few years, but the inner order sustains you through the time of the chaos, which we're in now on a, on a worldwide basis. So we can look at things like the uh, uh, SARS-2 COVID uh, SARS um, COVID 2 and say, well, let's treat it as a medical issue, or we can see it's part of the chaos. Did people plan to do these things? I think there's a lot of evidence that that's there, but it doesn't matter. What matters is it's the chaos. And what matters is we're being tested so we can stay strong in the chaos because that test of the chaos is what elevates us spiritually. So that's a kind of a, a bigger picture. Any questions about that? And how are we receiving the questions? Uh, it says two right here. Yeah, you can check the, the two here. Okay, one is, what is your opinion on eating wild greens like dandelion? And Heidi, what is the best way to get rid of mercury from your system? Those are the two questions you have. So, um, Let's start with the uh, heavy metal toxicity. And um, the best way has got to be the simplest way. You can do lots of things to get mercury out, um, but they, uh, you can also get uh, toxicity from too much coming out all at once. Uh, it can affect your nervous system. It can affect your brain. It can affect your pancreas. It can even set you up for diabetes. So as the heavy metals come out, if it's too much, that's not such a good thing. Now, second question, part of that is, well, you can do chelation therapy, which is very, very effective, but it also costs money. I got to put this away here. Let's see if I can do this. It, it costs money and time and energy in a way that that's not available to most people. It works. Chelation therapy is excellent. Uh, so, so we go to the third level is first we avoid all sources of mercury. Now, most people who are on this world, you know, tree of life community know that vaccines have lots of mercury. So obviously you don't want vaccines. 
um, and you don't want to, uh, you know, be breaking thermometers with murky and, and ingested. Okay, that's kind of obvious. I'm just making a half joking point. The uh, the key is we want to avoid all sources of mercury, and the, the most important thing is we need a gentle chelation system. So I've played with this over the years. Again, things come out too fast, particularly with the mercury can affect your kidneys, your liver, and your brain. So I have come across a thing called Detox Plus. Um, it's a really the precursor to NCD, but it's, it's way better. And what I experience is that when people do it over a few months, you know, three to six months, you're pulling it out. But you're also pulling out lead, mercury, cadmium. You're also, um, this structure, the ZOI structure also disables viruses, bacteria, and fungi. So obviously it's going to be an antiviral. Um, and it also takes out pesticides and, and, and uh, things like that. Okay, so what I'm saying is it's a pesticides, herbicides, the whole kind of picture. All that <clears throat> is done with the, uh, is with the Detox Plus now. So the advantage of course is this is simple, it's inexpensive, it's slow, which is good um, in, in the sense that you're not going to get toxic from the uh, things coming out. Now, we speed it up a little bit, and I've experimented with this. I'm, I'm not just uh, theorizing. So I found that uh, with juice fasting, a week of juice fasting significantly increases the rate of detox because with fasting, we're activating the detox rate. Now, uh, we're about ready to announce when we're going to do a fast. I think it's going to be sometime late last week in July or third week in July, but we'll give people a head up in the next few days. So if you are concerned about detox, but actually this is what I recommend. You do the seven day juice fast. We're going to do it over the internet at this moment with a lot of supervision. We're uh, basically taking our regular model and adopting the internet uh, with lectures and talks and Q&A and things like that. Uh, and um, we're also, uh, I'm suggesting everyone take Detox Plus. Why? Because it's going to take out lead, mercury, and cadmium, not just mercury. Because basically a lot of these things accumulate, whether it's from vaccinations or this, that, and other thing. So all these things are being poured out, plus the pesticides and herbicides and things like that, um, plus uh, <clears throat> depleted uranium, which is still around from the use of uh, uh, the depleted uranium as, as a weapon. So there's uh, and all the radiation accidents that happen that are happening all the time. So I strongly recommend, you know, uh, for a general detox twice a year, which is what I do, uh, I always take the detox plus. So, uh, and for sure, during the fast, I, I recommend 15 drops three to four times a day because it's ex the detox is accelerated and that we, we take advantage. I also take it during the uh, non-fasting times too uh, because we're always being inundated with toxins. So that's what I recommend with mercury. It really does work. Um, I have ways of testing it is I think is more accurate than uh, the blood or urine tests or hair tests. Um, so I monitor it. So I've been doing this, but really a lot comes out even in a one week fast. So that's the lead mercury cadmium at, at that level. So now the, the um, next question, oops, what just happened here? She's had the questions. Oh, God, I can't find the box. Oh, you have to go to mercury. 
No, I answered the first two questions. No, there were two questions. So uh, there's, there's another totally different question, but it's, it's not clear. Yeah, so the really the most important thing about the wild greens is one, they're wild. They have the, more, they have the most energy, wild greens. And two, they have to be organic. Now, if they're really wild, you kind of say, well, they're automatically organic. That's not necessarily so, because in areas where there's a lot of uh, spraying, agricultural spraying, uh, really even not in a particular field, the sprays move, the air moves them. So you really need to go uh, away from agricultural, commercial agriculture. Then I think the wild greens are going to are really a, a very very positive thing, uh, very high energy. Uh, thing. So let's see if we have any more questions. What? Okay. Well, actually, it's eleven thirty. Uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna do that. Yes. Okay. So we're actually did our half hour. These are very good questions because we had spiritual questions and then we had nutritional type questions. So now we're going to go into uh, dance and meditation. I mentioned the power of dance to help free ourselves up ready to meditate. And I'm just going to go over the meditation a, a little bit so we kind of have a feeling for it. Um, we start, uh, this is a meditation that was given to uh, Moses at the burning bush. Um, they don't use the word meditation. And I'm sure he was meditating. So, uh, so he was given this name of God. Yoda on the in-breath, hey on the out-breath. Wa on the in-breath, hey on the out-breath. So it's Yod, and then uh, to the heart, hey out through the heart. Wa, from the base up to the third eye, and then hey out through the heart. Okay? And you just repeat it till your mind's quiet. So interesting pictures are coming up. So we're getting ready to dance here um, because that's a really nice way to start. Now I'm going to dance, but I invite everyone to dance because it gets you going. We're dancing for about three minutes here. So it's kind of fun. Um, I'm just going to mention Let the Whore. We get started now. We'll be in the middle of it. It will be fast. Fine. We're doing a different song, which is fun. So, meditation, sit quietly, witness what goes on, observe from the flow of the uh, energy, the Kundalini energy, whatever's going on, if you happen to have Kriyas, and we'll talk about that afterwards. And then I will give Shakti Pat through the eyes at the, uh, when we begin the meditation, take that in. Now, I'm going to tell you something I usually don't talk about, but I I think I'm going to because I, I mentioned it in my book and, and I had to think it through. In the process of touching, giving Jacques about personally being there, uh, there is a burning of karma. And uh, I'm going to say, uh, I observed it with Muktananda, but it definitely I've had psychics who observe me that in my field, I'm absorbing, not all of your karma, but some of your karma, and it, it actually gets burned up. So I'm looking about, well, how does that translate to uh, over the internet? And what, uh, what I get, okay, is that as I'm looking at you and doing the yod as well, there's a force that is indeed burning karma. So if there's stuff that you are kind of stuck with or, you know, that's there, uh, the whole meditation will be burning karma, but because we're creating a whole field, but particularly when I'm looking at you, 
So that's kind of a, a, a key. Uh, there's some, definitely some level of, of karma burning. Um, if you don't, if you can't burn the karma, then you take it on. And, and some of the uh, different spiritual teachers are particularly psychic, uh, psychics. They'll take the karma and they can't burn it. I am fortunate that, you know, I've tested it out. I'm, the burnt karma gets burnt. Again, not all the karma, but keep in mind karmas that you want to get burnt and that will kind of put that out in the, in the beginning of, of that whole process. So that's just a little added extra. I, I can't tell you exactly how it works. I can tell you that's what happened with Muktananda. Um, and I can also tell you, let's see if I can say it right. You know, he took on some karmas that actually, yeah, uh, with Native American, he did it in Oklahoma and he got a stroke. And, you know, a lot of different things he picked up. And before I was willing to even put myself in that position, I kind of checked it. And it appears I'm burning it all up. Thank goodness. Okay, God's grace on that. So we'll be, that's also what's going on, okay? You're getting the Shakti, that uh, spiritual energizing force that, you know, called the waking of the Kundalini. And we call it also the Ruach HaKadosh in the Torah system or Haniha. And when that's awakened, it's an opportunity to burn karma. There's another little piece to it. Uh, but I think it's important people understand. And that is, when Moses initiated Yehoshua, some of his spirit went into him as part of the initiation. I kind of looked at that too. It's like, wait, am I going to get depleted? But it doesn't work that way. So I just being aware, I'm trying to really articulate it. It's, it's actually, uh, it was a section of my book that I did yesterday, you know, that where I reviewed it. So there is a piece of my spirit going into you, okay? And my concern, I mean, everybody has different concerns about different things, is, well, am I getting depleted? No. The answer is, the more that I, it's coming out, and the more you receive um, of that spiritual energy, the more I'm being filled by the cosmos, by the divine, with even more spiritual energy. So it's an amplification. So I don't feel depleted. I feel really enhanced. So uh, in case anybody has a need to feel guilty, don't. I, I, am, I come out being enhanced by giving you uh, that spiritual energy. So those are a little bit more sophisticated discussion that I haven't really been sharing publicly before, but I think it's time. So I'm going to take my shirt off. We're going to start with a three minute dance, please, please come dance with us and we will play. You may want to see what this is. This is the 5G protection that's now available. Uh, I was just talking with David Wagner on it today, but it is now available and we are selling it. And I'm very excited because people need to be 5G protected. Think in a week, Sometime next week, I'm actually going to give a whole presentation uh, for the car, for your home, and for yourself. So that's good news, too. Um, and the, uh, the only other thing, and I'm going to go through it as we bring the energy down and coming up, goes out to the heart, burns up all negative fields within ourselves, viruses, bacteria, fungi, and negative thought forms, then send it out to the world, doing the same thing, and finally off plan. So a lot's happening and you're all part of it. And that's kind of the, the big picture. And uh, so we'll, we'll get started. I was dancing over here. It's right there and I'll, I'll come out and carry it. Okay. Oh, no, not, not ready yet. We lost. Yeah.
Get your surf. Should they hear me? Yep. Get your surf ready to dance. But remember, the dance is the expression of the divine. So let the divine music, the sound of the divine, move through you. That's actually how I do it. They have the music going on. That's cool. Uh, but inside of that, that's where the divine is. So we've got a lot of spiritual teachings here uh, in a very practical way because ultimately spirituality and the one I'm talking about, which is the holistic path of liberation, holistic path of liberation, kind of get that concept because we kind of were talking about it, is uh, what I'm teaching and everything counts. Every part of the day counts, not just when you're hungry. Are you emotionally ready? Oh, not quite yet. Okay. Yeah. So, main thing is nobody's looking at you to see how you're dancing. Let yourself experience the play of the divine. Okay. Are you ready to go? And at the end of that, and I will we'll get to the we are being censored. America's news outlets no longer provide the truth. I'm okay. Well, we're still dancing the chaos. This is a world makeover. Mashiach will come take over. You won't gotta be me or see what I see. All you gotta do is take a look forward. Lift up your eye to the sky. Spread out your hands. Say thank you. Smile. Get them up. Put them up. Leave them up. Ha ha. Yep, yep. Pump up the value every day. Stand in place. Heart racing. No words to say. Pressure building. Trying to hold my face. Mind tripping like not today. Wake up from everything. Break out your shield and scream. Ha. Shim. You're the king. Ha. Shim. You're the king. I share my life, I share my life, I share in love, let all of us I share my life, I share my life, I share in love. I share my life, I share my life, I share in love, let all of us
meditation of the will. The first letter of the method, the first letter would be the will. There we go. I sit, but I do sit fours. Keeps me from falling over. Okay, now take a deep breath and feel the energy. Should I start again? Feel the energy coming down to the crown and up through the base, actually slightly below the base chakra, coming into the heart. Okay, and feel that light and love in the heart filled with all this fire power of God. And now exhale and send that fire power of God out to your whole body, burning up all areas of darkness, negative thought forms, and actually positive thought forms. And now inhale again, take it into your heart. Now spread it out throughout the whole universe here and uh, the whole living planet burning up all areas of darkness, transforming it into the light. Whew. And now breathe in again and exhale this time. Send that fire power of God from the outside to surface to the planet, to the whole solar system, burning up all forces of extra terrestrial darkness, transforming it into light. And we continue to meditate. Just repeat the mantra till your mind is quiet. Stay in meditation.
slowly come out of meditation. And we'll have a brief uh, time of sharing. Uh, if you, there are many signs that this Kundalini rock Kadesh energy has been awakened. One is heat, unusual heat. Another is kind of spontaneous movements. Another is different sounds. Uh, we call nada. Um, some people feel vibrations. Some people feel the moving of energy. So these are just some of the basic signs that will tell you, yeah, the rocket ash kundalini is awakened. So if anybody wants to share, we're just going to take two or three minutes for this. Does anyone have any sharing that they want to do? How many? Okay, good, nice. While you're thinking about the sharing, I just want to say, um, this is my service, okay? This is what I'm born to do, quite honestly. I don't take it as if I'm doing anything. And so I appreciate you sharing this with other people because we're going to keep doing this and expanding it. Um, but there's a lot of energy here because it's time to wake up. In a world where there's chaos, as we're talking about, the power of spiritual energy, the power of the Kundalini, the power of spiritual awareness brings order to the chaos and elevates the whole society. So the more people we have participating in this, besides the firepower meditation, which I request people try to do every day, the more we're, we're kind of have this collective energy going, the greater positive effect we're going to have on the global mind and really global consciousness. So keep that in mind. Invite people to come and share this. Okay, there's a few things. Yeah. Yes. Felt movements of energy in different directions and head creas. Okay, so Michael, the energy is already moving in you. The Kundalini is awakened, Rakadesh is awakened, and it's continuing to unfold. One little caveat don't get attached to what happens because eventually it all goes very quiet, and what's left is the white light of the divine within yourself. Time for two more. Could see dark versus light, but line halfway through before breaking through golden greenish light. So the golden light, the greenish light is a little bit more of the heart and mind level. But the golden light is what we call the super causal body. It means you've gone, the energy, the, the kundalini has been awakened, and that light is a sign, that, that golden light is a sign that's been awakened. Extremely powerful energy, feel completely numb. First time I've danced in 50 years. Yes! Remember, dance brings the joy of life. It invites God in to celebrate. We know God through love and through joy. And dancing is a really beautiful way to get that joy. So I'm so happy you shared that. That's why we do it. It really is a bona fide way of kind of opening us up to the joy of God. The, the whole relationship isn't an austere thing. It's love, it's joy, it's dance. That's how the energy gets going. That's what makes it fun. Spiritual life is fun. Okay, so I'm going to kind of end there. I'm, it's a great sharing. Um, so the way to tune into us is drcousins.com or Tree of Life dot m n dot c o and you can go and th that takes you right to the community 
And the whole idea is we're, we're trying to build a community in the midst of the chaos, we are building a spiritual worldwide community. Share with people, bring people to this time so we can keep expanding. Okay, peace be with you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Oh, Matakiwasana.